Today, I want to challenge you to ask yourself a very serious question. Are you a true disciple of Jesus Christ or are you just simply a Christian? That's coming up next on The Beat. Hey everyone, my name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Beat. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I wanna challenge you to ask yourself a very serious question today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a detailed verse-by-verse -verse look at probably one of the most difficult passages in the New Testament. It is certainly one of the most unpopular passages, one that you may have never actually heard preached in a church service before, but these are the very words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is brutally honest with us and just simply gives us a clear blueprint, a clear understanding or picture of what his expectations are for those of us who claim to be his disciples. Beginning in Luke chapter 14, verse 25, it says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus. So if you can imagine for a second that Jesus' popularity during this time began to spread. People had begun to hear how great of a teacher he was, how great of a speaker he was, how amazing his miracles were, and he was able to heal people. He was able to feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He was able to actually even control the weather. And so many of these people, although they were not committed to Jesus Christ, they were part of the outside crowd of people that may have been curious about Jesus Christ, and they may have just simply been following him because they wanted to see a magic show or they wanted to receive some sort of handout. And so Jesus has here what every preacher dreams of having. He has a crowd of people following him, waiting to receive the very words that come out of his mouth. And you would think that Jesus would give them a message that would simply promise them a life of ease, a life of comfort, a life of convenience, a life that is characterized by health and wealth and prosperity in hopes that if he tells this crowd this, then maybe they would go back and invite a friend and maybe they would come back next week and then they would have an even bigger crowd. But to our surprise, Jesus doesn't do this. Instead, he lays it out and he's brutally honest with these people. And he says, you know what? If you truly want to be a disciple of mine, a true follower of mine, this is what it's going to take. He says, I don't want you to be surprised. I don't want you to be confused. I don't want you to not know what to expect. This is what I expect. And this is what you can expect if you're going to be a follower of mine. Qualification number one, a true disciple is willing to elevate their faith over their family. Notice what Jesus says. He says, if anyone, let's stop right there. In other words, what he's getting ready to say, he says, this does not just apply to pastors, preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and all the spiritual heavyweights. He says, no, if any person that is alive desires to be a disciple of mine, to follow me, this is what it's going to take. So continuing on, he says, if you do not hate your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, wait, is Jesus contradicting himself? Is he saying that I should literally hate these people, these people in my family? No, what he is saying, he's using strong language to say that, you know what, you need to elevate your relationship with me on such a high level that is totally out of this world, totally in a category by itself, so that it is as if you hate them when you compare your love and your loyalty to me when compared to your love and your loyalty to your family and your friends and all other significant relationships. So for some of you watching this video, this very well may be your reality because in your culture, it very well may not be popular for you or even safe for that matter for you to uh, choose Jesus Christ over the religion of your family. But Jesus says you must be willing to be disowned even by your own family members and put your relationship with me in a different category and elevate it above your family if you are truly going to be a disciple of mine. Qualification number two, a true disciple elevates sacrifice over self-centeredness. Notice Jesus says here, if anyone comes after me and does not hate, his own life. In other words, what Jesus is saying here is that I must be first and foremost, you must be willing to trade in your will and the things that you want for your life if you're going to truly be my disciple. You see, many of us, we have these areas in our lives, if we're just honest about it, where we say, you know what, God, you can control these things over here, but whatever it is, don't don't touch this. You do not have control over this. God, do not ask me to give up my career. Do not ask me to give up my family. Do not ask me to let my children go 
going to the mission field. God, do not ask me to give up this business, Lord, or this comfortable lifestyle, or my house in the suburbs, or these cars that I drive. And many times we stay on the outside in the crowd rather than going into the, the area of the committed because we're afraid that if we get closer to Jesus Christ, he is just very well going to require us to give up something that we're really not ready to give up. But Jesus is very clear. If we're not willing to surrender and sacrifice everything, we cannot be his disciples. Qualification number three, a true disciple embraces for a life of pain rather than pleasure. Notice Jesus says next, and whoever does not carry his cross cannot be my disciple. So if you are a first century Roman or Jew or Gentile, you understood what this means. Jesus is not simply saying that, you know what, your life at times may be uncomfortable and inconvenient. No, for these people, they understood that Christianity could very very well cost them their lives. And so this is the reason why I have so many issues with the prosperity gospel. And I talk about it a lot because Jesus is not promising an easy life. He's saying, you know what, if you are going to be a true disciple of mine, you may have to carry your cross. You may have to endure some suffering and some pain, and your life may not always be characterized by pleasure, prosperity, and health. Qualification number four, a true disciple elevates relationship over religion. Notice Jesus says, and whoever does not follow me cannot be my disciple. In this culture, when a rabbi would invite someone to follow them, he was essentially inviting them to be a learner of them. And so the question we want to ask here is, am I learning? Am I growing spiritually? Am I sitting at the feet of Jesus and growing in my knowledge and understanding of God? Or am I just simply a religious person who comes to church, maybe gets involved a few times and, uh, give some money to the church thinking that if I do these things that I'll get God off of my back. No, Jesus is saying a true disciple of mine does not just stay in the crowd and lead some religious life. They enter into an intimate relationship and fellowship with me that is characterized by being a learner of Jesus Christ. Qualification number five, a true disciple values commitment over convenience. In these next few verses, Jesus gives two pictures of commitment and he starts off by saying, who builds a tower without first counting the cost to make sure that they have enough money to be able to complete the project. And so he says in the same way, he says, I want you to consider what I'm saying before you just jump in and say, I want to be Christian, or you just jump in and say, I want to lead a life group, or I want to be in ministry, or I want to get married, or I want to have children. He says, no, a true disciple counts the cost to make sure they have what it takes to pull it off so that later on, when things get tough, they do not leave. They stay committed to whatever it is that they have committed themselves to. And finally, qualification number six, a true disciple is useful to God rather than useless. Now, this is going to be a tough one. Notice he says here that salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, then how could it be made salty again? What in the world is Jesus saying? Well, you have to understand that in this day, salt was a very, very valuable commodity. It was used for several things. First of all, it was used as a seasoning or a flavor enhancement. It was also used as a preservative to be able to keep food from spoiling. In both instances, salt was used to create change, to change the atmosphere around it. But if salt was left around the wrong minerals, the salt could very well be contaminated and thus losing its taste, losing its flavor, losing its usefulness. And then Jesus says, you know what, in the same way that can happen to Christians. We're supposed to be salt. We're supposed to be changing the world. We're supposed to be changing the environment. But if we are contaminated by the environment around us, Jesus says, you know what, how are you useful to me? Me. He says, you're useful for nothing but to be thrown out. As a matter of fact, a second use of salt in those days was to be used as fertilizer. They would throw salt on top of manure to keep the weeds from growing up. And Jesus even says in this passage, you know what? I can't even use you for a secondary use. I can't even throw you on top of a pile of manure. And so once again, what Jesus is saying here in this passage is just simply for us to consider and ask ourselves these six questions to see if I am truly a true disciple of Jesus Christ or am I just simply a Christian going along with the flow, living some easy religious life, expecting God to do everything for me without me doing anything for God? I heard somebody say a long time ago, it is a tragedy for us to give so little to the one who gave so much. I want to leave you with this. Salvation will cost you nothing, but discipleship will cost you everything.